Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two for part three of a special series on Medicare and health insurance with uh, our favorite new expert and best friend, Aaron Zolbrod. Um, there's going to be a bunch of these videos. We hope you watch them all. We hope you like them. We hope you subscribe to Celebrating Act Two to see them all. And when they're all done, you can go to our playlist and uh, watch them in sequence. They're So far, they're extremely informative. I'm learning a lot, and I know you will too. Um, Art, where did we leave off last time? Well, last, last time we uh, did the uh, history of Medicare, and, uh, uh, and actually Aaron made it as simple as A, B, C, D, because those are the original parts. And uh, right. to, today we're gonna take a closer look into the kind of additional uh, insurance coverage that you can get beyond the basic Medicare with the uh, original supplements and the newer Advantage plans, what they mean. So he's gonna do a comparison of them because there's a big difference between the two. And most people who have one or the other may not even know that they have an Advantage plan when they think they have a supplement and so yeah. on. So he's gonna go into that. Aaron, right. good to see you again, thank you. That was Thanks, guys. That was a great introduction, Art. And that is so true that you cannot believe how many people I meet that have no idea what kind of plan they have. Yeah. None. They don't know. I said, do you have a supplement or advantage plan? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I meet people who don't even know the name of their insurance company. Um, so, you know, it's so important that people understand it. And um, the differences between supplements, advantage plans, we talked about that in the last episode, the history Supplements have been around almost as long as Medicare in the mid 60s. Um, uh, I would still call Advantage plans. I don't know if they're in the infancy stage, but maybe we're in like our preteen stage because they've only been around since 2004. Um, and they're so mainstream now. You see the commercials, all those commercials you see on TV with Joe Namath and Jimmy Walker and what other washed up actor and athlete they're prancing out there. Those are Advantage plans. They're, that's what those guys are pitching. Um, it, it are those advantage plans. And again, they are not supplements. They okay. are not designed well, to good, pay we're, gonna, we're about to go off screen yes. and take notes, copious notes, even though we can watch this again, but we're gonna take notes because we gotta make sure we have the right coverage. So take it away, Aaron. Yeah, yes. I, I wanna, as Aaron, just as you begin this, I want to clarify for me, because I'm, I'm one of those people that just, what's your insurance? Oh, it's Medicare. I don't know, well, right. here's, here's my card. Um, the, the advantage plans, as you described, see if I remember this correctly, are really uh, privatization. It's, yep. it's, it's giving my Medicare money to a, my private insurance to take care of me. And, and that could be anything, right? Correct. That's, like not if you're, that's not the same as supplements. Correct. If you're showing one card, John, and it says HMO or PPO on it, you've got an advantage plan. Oh, people who okay. have supplements, people who have supplements show two cards at a doctor. They show their Medicare card and their supplemental card. People who only show one card at the doctor have an advantage plan. And if you're not sure if you do, pull your card out that you show at the doctor. If it says HMO or PPO, you've got an advantage plan. That's simple. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Good. That's helpful. It, that's, so now that's you're gonna simple. explain yes. you're gonna explain the difference that's, between advantage and supplements. That's the simple way of knowing what you've got. Let's yeah. talk about let's talk about supplements first. They've been around again, since Medicare. And supplements are known as Medigap policies. That's the perfect name, Medigap. They're that simple. That's what they're designed to do. There's five medical gaps in Medicare. There's three gaps in your hospitalization coverage. There's the, the gap in skilled nursing, which is days 81 or days 21 through 100 in a skilled nursing home. That's a short-term facility that's designed to nurse you back to health so you can go home and be independent again. And then the fifth gap is going to be the 20% of Part B that Medicare does not cover. You purchase a supplement, you purchase a Medigap policy to cover those gaps. Very, very simple. Okay, very, very simple. Um, what we, what, so supplements, the claims are paid differently with the two types of plans. So how claims are paid with supplements is, Medicare approves the service and then coordinates with the supplement to pay their portion. We're gonna talk about this in another episode, but 
the insurance companies on a supplement have no say in what's covered, zero. They have no say. It's Medicare who decides what's covered. The beauty of me having Medicare in a supplement is Medicare lets your doctor and you decide what the best course of treatment is. Your doctor decides what's medically necessary. And if your doctor wants you to have that, that MRI or that surgery, um, then he orders it. Medicare pays the bill without question. Medicare tells your supplement company what they owe and who they owe it to, or who they owe it to, and that supplement company has no say. They can't say, "Oh, we don't think that's medically necessary." Nope. The regulation states that they must pay that. Um, supplements also have no networks. That supplements provide basically access to doctors and hospitals all over the country. So most of us, especially those of us under 65, are used to calling up a doctor and saying, "Do you take XYZ insurance?" Do you take blue, do you take Blue Cross Blue Shield? Do you take United Healthcare? Do you take Aetna? Well, when you have a supplement, that's not what you call up and ask. Do you take the name of my supplement company? You just ask, do you accept Medicare? Take Medicare. They'll probably chuckle because they'll say, of course we do. There isn't a full service hospital in the country that doesn't take Medicare. And there are very, very few doctors, especially specialists, who don't take Medicare. So you basically have access to a nation of nationwide access. So, you know, in, in Pittsburgh, we have two major healthcare systems. Uh, we have UPMC, which is University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, and we have Allegheny Health Networks, which is owned by our local Blue Cross Blue Shield um, franchise. And so the beauty of having a supplement is we can go to both of those hospitals. We can go to local doctors and hospitals. If I get sick, if you know, if you have a supplement and you want to go to the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, which is widely considered the best in the world, you can go. The Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, Johns Hopkins. Um, when you're traveling, you're covered. There's no worries about in-network, out-of-network. And so that's a supplement. Now, supplements are generally more expensive, and that is because they provide you know, more coverage in – there's less out-of-pocket expense. People on supplements pay very little, if any – medical bills. Okay. Very little, if any medical bills. Now supplements do not come with prescription drugs either like original Medicare. So those on supplements must purchase another policy that's called a standalone prescription drug plan. That's in addition um, to supplements. Uh, supplements tend to start around um, depending on what state you're in anywhere between 70, probably in $140 or $150, depending on what state you're in. Uh, for a 65-year-old, the older you are, the more expensive they're going to be. Um, and that is supplements. I like to say about supplements, you pay more at the front door for your insurance, but if you get sick, you don't pay anything out the back door. Okay, so there's that peace of mind of knowing that you're never going to be inundated with medical bills, um, yeah. that every pretty much everything's going to be paid for and you're never going to have to worry about having a claim denied. An insurance company saying, no, we don't think that MRI is medically necessary. You know, we're going to make you get three weeks of physical therapy before we're going to let you get that MRI, or you need to get injection therapy before you have that surgery. That will never happen with a supplement, okay? Let's move on to Advantage plans, which again, were introduced in 2004. Um, they were introduced as a way to, the original concept was, it was going to supply people with better benefits than original Medicare for little or no cost. And it was going to save the government money. The government was going to save money by farming out or paying private insurance companies to take over. Okay. And it gives you a private option. So you have the right part C is a med is defined as your right as a Medicare beneficiary to choose a private insurance company to pay claims and provide benefits in place of Medicare. Okay, that's kind of the formal definition. Basically what you're doing when you're choosing an HMO, when you're choosing one of these private companies, when you choose an HMO or PPO, you're choosing to have Medicare, you get rid of Medicare basically. Um, you're privatizing your, your Medicare and now Medicare is paying this private insurance company about $12,000 a year and this is the best way I can put it. They're paying them to get rid of you. They're paying the private insurance company to take on the burden of providing you with a benefit package. And they're paying them to pay all claims. So now for that $12,000, John, if, you're, if you have a 
you know, quadruple bypass, and that's $180,000. That private insurance company has to pay that $180,000 minus your cost sharing. So you have a copay. So the different, the, one of the biggest differences between supplements and Advantage plans is where supplements, pretty much everything's paid, you're going to have copays on Advantage plans for most services. You're going to have copays, you know, for blood work that can be five or ten dollars. Uh, X-ray may be twenty-five. The emergency room might be ninety or one hundred and ten. An MRI or CAT scan or outpatient surgery might be two hundred. A hospitalization could be anywhere from two twenty-five to eighteen hundred. You could pay thousands of dollars if you need chemo, radiation. You have a long stay in a skilled nursing facility. You need injection or infusion therapy or a prosthetic device. You can be billed thousands of dollars. And that is one of the major differences. And when I explain this, a lot of times people say, well, stop me. They'll stop me right there when I, when I say there's all these costs. Why the heck would anybody choose an Advantage plan? Well, the answer lies in, one, the cost. Um, because these companies are getting $12,000 a year from Medicare, they're making a profit off of that. They don't have to charge a premium. They can give you these zero premiums. If you ever wonder why... These commercials all say zero premium, or they're even actually pitching now selling that you're going to get money back in your social security benefit. They can afford to do that because they're getting $12,000 per person. Our local Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna and UPMC Advantage plans all have over 100,000 members. Do that math. $12,000 a year times 100,000 people, right? They're making money off that. They don't need to charge. So premiums on Advantage plans tend to be lower. Um, when, when we have clients that want them, we never let people pay more than $40 for them. Our most popular plans are zero to $25. And then the second reason why people are choosing them, and you're seeing this on TV, they come with free stuff. And it is valuable and it is generous. So Advantage plans come with can come with comprehensive dental benefits very good comprehensive dental. They come with benefits for eyeglasses and a routine eye exam, for hearing aids and a routine hearing exam. They come now with something called over-the-counter benefits, which is monopoly money to spend on things like vitamins and cough, cold, and flu remedies, and anything you can walk into a, uh, a, a, a big box store or grocery store or pharmacy and get off the shelf. And they come with even more free stuff. And so that's what's drawing people into them. Um, again, you are not, you don't have, you don't have, they're not supplements. You, you're going to put your Medicare card in a drawer. And so what happens is now the insurance company is in charge. Instead of Medicare deciding what's covered and what gets paid for, the insurance company kind of has that power. So when you need an MRI or a CAT scan or an outpatient surgery or home health care or biopsies, and other certain other services, they have to be prior authorized. In other words, you cannot have that until the insurance company says, okay. Now, nine times out of 10 or even more, they say, okay, in a week to two weeks. But every once in a while, they're gonna say, nope, you're, we want you to get three weeks of physical therapy before we're gonna let you get that MRI. We're not gonna let you have that surgery until you have um, physical therapy or you, you have injection therapy. I had a client who fought our local Blue Cross Blue Shield for one year to get an MRI on her back. She had to do physical therapy, injection therapy, massage therapy. And by the time she got her MRI, she needed two surgeries, two, and she will never be the same. And maybe if they had let her get that MRI when her doctor wanted her to get it, she might not have needed two surgeries and she might not be in you know, pain for the rest of her life. Well, and so that is the biggest thing people need to understand. That's really the difference between how insurance companies work is because they have to make a profit somewhere along the line, they really need to control costs. And, right. and that's what you're talking about here. Um, it seems to me, tell me if I'm on the right track here. It seems to me that if you are younger and healthy, that the lower premiums and all these benefits might be better for you than the supplement plan. Is that correct? Correct. That, that it, it can be, but here's the, here's the one thing that people also don't understand. In every state except eight, you cannot leave an Advantage plan 
and go to a supplement unless you're oh. relatively healthy. So if oh. you choose an advantage plan when you first go on, when you're first 65 or you get talked into one um, yeah. because you're told that it's, the, it's so great, you get all these things and then you get sick down the road and you, you have a year where you got five or six or $7,000 in bills and that, that, that dental wasn't free. If you got $7,000 in bills, that gym membership wasn't free. If you got yeah. $7,000 in bills, those eyeglasses weren't free. And then you call me up and say, Aaron, I want to go back to a supplement. And the first thing I'd say, okay, what happened? Oh, well, I had a stroke and I spent 60 days in a skilled nursing facility and got a bill for 6,000 bucks. Well, guess what? The supplement company in all but eight states, they're not taking you back. They don't have to take you back. Wow. And now you're locked into your advantage plan for life, possibly. Yeah, um, now that's 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 really important to know before when you turn 65 and you sign up for Medicare in the first place. Am I correct? It's not being, it's, and it's not being explained, John. It's simply not being explained. And by the um, way, also, by the way, also, our audience is our audience because they're living longer, healthier lives. And what that means is that instead of, you know, dropping dead at 70, we're yeah. all reaching into the 80s and 90s. And yes. so everybody is going to get not more or less got a good chance of having a major issue at some point. And yeah. if you can't get back on a, uh, into a supplement and you can't choose it after you're sick anyway. In other words, if you're in the right. hospital and, and you're being treated, you can't call up your broker and the right. rules are Correct. different for, for transferring. Yeah. Except in eight states, except in eight states. And I, th I believe California is one where there's no underwriting requirements. So, so if you want to leave an advantage plan and go to a supplement, you can do that during certain times of the year, right. um, yeah. during annual election period. Um, in California, and I believe New York's another, maybe Massachusetts, um, and I forget the others, but uh, that's just not being told to people. Um, there are a lot of brokers like myself who that only sell Advantage plans, and, and here's why. Man, do they pay us handsomely. Uh, Advantage mm -hmm. plans pay us so much more commission, especially for people new to Medicare. It's ridiculous. I think it's way too much. Um, they should cut it back. Um, that's my belief, and supplements don't pay us near the amount of money. And if anybody um, doesn't, if anybody doesn't uh, uh, believe that, then there's going to be another episode where I know that you're going to talk about uh, Joe Namath and Shatner yep. and all the other guys that are picked. If there weren't a lot of money in it, you wouldn't be seeing all these ads saying, call now, correct. see if your zip code pays you more money. Uh, uh, free correct. Medicare. It's, it's gonna, listen, if you want to see somebody, you want to be somebody get animated, you turn into that episode because you're going to see me get pretty animated. Um, you know, one thing that, that, that we do is we protect our clients. Um, you know, we protect our seniors. And I get so angry when I see my clients being preyed upon. Um, and I want to be clear, I am not anti-advantage plan. You know, it's going to sound that way as we move along. I'm not. What I am is I am pro-information and pro-education yeah. and that you have to be educated on this to make a good decision. If you're well, educated wanna... and you understand it and you want to make that choice, great. But so many people are making these choices without understanding mm -hmm. these differences. Yep. yep. I, I, one other point, and that is that uh, the way you're describing all this, it's really important to understand that. Uh, these choices are so different for every individual. What might be right for me right. is not right for you. No cookie cutter approach, period. Yeah. There's so yeah. many different, so many different things that go into it. If you're a veteran, if you if you qualify for PACE or PACENET, which prescription assistance in some states like Pennsylvania we have, if you're offered benefits through the VA, if you have a plan that could be that you have access to through a company you retired from, Retired teachers in the state of Pennsylvania have excellent retiree medical benefits. Um, those are all factors that need to go into it. Um, you know, it's not a cookie cutter approach. It's absolutely not one size yeah. fits all. I do senior, sem we do seminars at senior centers and churches. And I come in as a guest speaker and we do an educational. And I say, if I took all 25 people in this room, I would probably get, I would probably give, 15 to 20 different sets of advice to those 20 people, 25 yeah. people that only five or 10 would get the same set of advice. The others would have some other circumstance that, you know, healthcare need of medication they're taking access to, to, to something else where I would give them um, a different advice. Yeah. Uh, which is why it's so important to have a broker you can trust who can explain this to you. 
Uh, otherwise, you end up with the wrong plan. I estimate, John, that 50% of people out there have the wrong plan. They're either overpaying, they're either overpaying in premiums or not getting um, the same value and benefits they would on another on another plan. Wow. 50%, one out of two. By the way, uh, it, it, would you do us a favor? Um, we always have the information in the description below, but uh, even though you're only licensed in 20 states, uh, I know that uh, your your uh, your website and uh, all the things that you do have a, a chock full of information. Uh, can you uh, let us know the best way to uh, contact you, uh, uh, website, and to see your uh, uh, your uh, uh, Pittsburgh Gazette uh, articles yep. and so on and so forth? Yep. Uh our website is getyourbestplan.com, G-E-T-Y-O-U-R-B-E-S-T-P-L-A-N.com, getyourbestplan.com. I love to receive emails. Um, if you want to email me personally with a question, I love that. Um, I live on my email. I've been told by um, some women it's a reason why I can't maintain a relationship as I live on my email. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um Email me. I might use your question in a column. We do put all those columns on our website. Um, I do a column every weekend in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette that runs in the print edition on Sunday and the digital edition Friday. And then we put those on our website. I just started a really cool Facebook group and it's titled the same, Ask the Medicare Specialist. That's the title of my column. And if you join that group, you can do that on our website. We are now offering some exclusive content. Um, we're doing something called um, Truths tips and tricks where we talk about a regulation or a law or an intricacy of Medicare, explain it, the truths about it, and then how to avoid, you know, high costs or how to avoid those pitfalls uh, within that, you know, within that nuance. And then we also have a series called Feel Good Fridays, where we're going to talk about how we had a client who had an issue and we resolved it. Just this morning, I got an email from a client who thinks he got erroneous bills. And so we're going to call the provider and, you know, possibly have to call Medicare or the supplement to see why that bill is what it is. Um, I think actually in this case, he's confused and he actually didn't get a bill. He got an explanation from Medicare that says he could owe X and thought it was a bill. But we have those feel good Fridays where we'll talk about that situation. And man, you can't believe the stuff that happens to to seniors. And, and you know, Guys, not just that we get you on the right plan first, it's that we make sure that you're not being, you're getting everything you're entitled to, not being overbilled, which is, oh, billions and billions of dollars seniors pay in erroneous bills every year. And so we're protecting our clients in, in that regard too, that they pick up the phone or they email me um, and, and we get those things straightened out. But my email is Aaron at getyourbestplan.com and it's A-A-R-O-N at getyourbestplan.com. Send me any question, concern you want. There's a really good chance I'll use your question in a, in a, in a future call. Great. Uh, Aaron, what are you going to talk to us about next time? Next, we're going to go into this advertising, okay, um, and how predatory it is and how to protect yourself and your loved ones from being becoming a victim. And then we're going to get into the next two. We're going to be pros and cons of supplements, pros and cons of Advantage plans. Um, in the stuff. next three Great three stuff. episodes, but for pure so entertainment, because I've seen pure pieces of this before. If you if you if you want to see Aaron animated, okay, don't miss the next episode of yeah, uh, TV animated. advertising for Advantage Plans. Yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.